喂，喂，喂，喂喂 ，shake。Okay, good girl. We're going to make some dog today. Now this kind of dog. It's water dog. Welcome back to Yauk Outdoors. Today we are going to design a salamander lure. There are many species of salamanders. Some have external gills so they can breathe in the water during the larva stage. Some have lungs, while most adult salamanders breathe through their skins. Some salamanders don't metamorphose into air-breathing form, like axolotls, and they stay in the water in their entire lifetime. Look at their fingers, gills. Aren't they just adorable? Cute. Cute. Um. Okay. Anyways, we are going to make a water dog, which is the larva stage of a tiger salamander. But they look very similar to the axolotl, just the color is different. In this design, I will skip adding the gills to the model, and will add them after the soft plastic lure is made, much like this salamander by Fish Lab. For the fins, I will use a new technique to design the wavy style. So be sure to check it out. I will also make a hook slot and some ribs to reduce the stiffness of the body. So let's get started. As you can see in the reference picture, there's a hump on the top of the body, and that hump eventually turns into、uh, the fin. That's why I make the body spiky like that on the top. Here I insert a canvas, which will help me to sculpt the body more precisely. I probably should have done this in the very beginning. Organic sculpting is not hard; it just takes time. As long as you can find a good reference or just use your imagination, every phase, edge, and point is adjustable. You can move, rotate, or scale them. Just be patient; you'll get there. Now the head and body are two pieces, and I want to have a smooth transition between these two. So first, I combine them. That will give me an intersection line. And next, I add fillet at that line to create this smooth transition. As you can see in the reference picture, the legs are coming out from the bottom of the body, and in my design, 
the bottom of the body is not aligned with the XY plane anymore. So I have to construct a new plane so I can draw the legs on that plane. I found the fingers are too short so I had to go back and uh, modify the sketch. Here I adjust the front legs so they look more natural. I also add the fillets at the joints. This one, well, too big. Make it smaller. That's about right. Second, third, and one more. Now it starts to take shape. Let's put a smile on the face. The idea here is to draw the outline on the offset plane first, then project the outline to the surface. For the fins, basically I need to make a thin slice that is flat in one end and gradually turns into a wavy shape. Previously I have posted a couple ways to do it using a loft. Today I'm going to use a different approach which I think is more effective and controllable. Here I select the plan form under the surface modeling. Then I draw two rectangles, one for upper fin, one for lower. As you can see, I use more faces for the upper fin because I want it to be wavier than the bottom one. Now move the control points to the desired locations. Now switch back to the solid modeling and add some thickness to the fins. Now draw the outline for the fin and use it to cut the fin.
There you have it, the complete water dog design. Now let's add some bonus. In the previous Gobi fish design, I found the lure is very stiff. So here I am adding some ribs. Hopefully that will reduce the stiffness and give the lure more action. Also add the hook slot. The mold design is a little bit complicated for this lure. It's not just a split in half type of design. Here I'm using different colors for different pieces, so it will be easier for you to see. The trick here is to break it apart when you see appropriate, uh, but in the end you can combine them into fewer numbers of molds. First, I identify which part of the mold can be split in half using the flat surface and which part has to be split using the wavy surface. And then I break the mold apart according to that. And in the end, I combine the parts that can be put on the same side. Finally, subtract out our 3D model from the mold. It's amazing to see what a 3D modeling tool can do in this type of design where the split is not flat, but the parts can still join seamlessly. To complete this off, I added the vent and also the sprue. Here's some bonus open pour bait that I made with the extra plastisol. Anyway, let's demote this water dog. Now let's open it. The moment of truth. Okay, I got some flash in here, but I should be able to trim it. All right, the fin looks good too. I got plastisol injected all the way to the back. Cool, I like it. If you like it too, hit that like button. 
Here's a closer look after trimming. I like those little fingers and there's a defect on the edge of the hook slot so I need to pay more attention when I inject next time. The fin turns out really well. I like the wavy design. Here's how I did the external gills. I find the largest needle in the house so I can thread those silicon skirt material through the eye. I also add some oil on the skirt so it will be easier to pull the material through. Finally give it a trim. There you go, the final product of Water Dog Salamander. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Tell me which part you like the most, dislike the most, and let me know what you want to see next. Like and subscribe if you have not. I'll see you next time. Peace.